Sir, sit here for a while, I'll go and ask the manager right away. Seeing the card in David's hand, the attitude of the staff suddenly changed 180 degrees. Okay. David nodded and sat aside to rest, and the staff member hurriedly went to ask the manager for instructions. This time, Lee Dongmai was a little confused. She didn't understand why the staff of this bank was suddenly so polite to David. David, do you really have 10 million? Seeing that the staff member suddenly changed his attitude, Lee Dongmai asked David with some doubts. What's your business? David smiled coldly. David, let me tell you, it is illegal to forge financial documents. You are a prisoner of labor reform, how can you have 10 million, don't think I don't know, your family is still living in the old community, and your dad is now sweeping the streets for people. How could you have 10 million? Lee Dongmai would never believe that David really had 10 million. If he really had the money, would he still live in such a broken community? And David just got out of jail, and it's impossible to earn 10 million in a few days. She felt that David must have deliberately pretended to be coercive in front of her because of her own reasons, that's why she said this. When other customers in the bank heard what Lee Dongmai said, they also looked at David curiously. These days, they all use the card to withdraw money. If there is any money in the card, they will know after a check. No one is really stupid enough to counterfeit the bank. Card it. After a while, the bank staff who had just left came over with a middle-aged man, who was wearing glasses and was in a hurry. Hello sir, I'm the manager of this bank. How can I help you? The middle-aged man walked in front of David and asked politely. I want to withdraw 1.3 million, but I don't have an appointment. Can I withdraw it? David said and handed the card to the bank manager. After seeing the bank card, the bank manager's expression changed slightly. Yes, sir, you don't need to make an appointment, but we don't have that much cash now. I'll send someone to deliver the cash from other places immediately. Sir, come to my office to rest first. Come down. David nodded and got up to go to the office to wait. Seeing this, Lee Dongmai was dumbfounded. She stopped the bank manager and said, What's going on with your bank? Why can you withdraw money without an appointment? He's just a prisoner of labor reform. You don't even check if he has any money in his card. Do you agree? If so, I will also take a million now. Lee Dongmai roared aggressively, and then said to her boyfriend, Husband, we also want to take one million. Lee Dongmei's boyfriend came over, glanced at David, and also took out a bank card and handed it to the bank manager. I also have 10 million in this card, and I want to withdraw 1 million now. The bank manager didn't even look at it, and said lightly, you can't pick it up without an appointment. This sentence can make Lee Dongmei mad. This is simply a double standard scene. David's card has 10 million, and he can withdraw money directly without making an appointment. Their card also has 10 million, but they have to make an appointment. What kind of broken bank are you? I'm going to complain to you, why can't he make an appointment, but we have to make an appointment. We also have 10 million in our card, can't you hear? Lee Dongmai roared at the bank manager. This gentleman is the supreme VIP of our bank, so there is no need to make an appointment, and you are just ordinary customers, there is no comparison. The bank manager said indifferently. Lee Dongmei's lungs were about to explode with anger, and her eyes suddenly stared, he is your supreme VIP. Are you mistaken? He is just a labor prisoner, just a prisoner who was just released. Chapter 72 This gentleman's card is the custom card of the Sioux family. We only recognize the card and not the person. Do you think you can compare with the Sioux family? A look of contempt flashed in the bank manager's eyes. The words of the bank manager made Lee Dongmai stunned for a moment, and everyone around them exclaimed. You must know that the Sioux family is the richest man in Horendal. No wonder the staff member changed his attitude when he saw the card in David's hand. With the Sioux family's card, let alone come to the bank to withdraw money in person, as long as a phone call is made, the bank will send someone to deliver the money in person. Customers like this are all the targets of major banks. And when Lee Dongmei's boyfriend heard that David was holding a custom card from the Sioux family, his face instantly turned pale. If David really had something to do with the Sioux family, with just one sentence, his small company would soon go bankrupt. No, impossible, how could he have a custom card from the Sioux family? He must have stolen it, or maybe he picked it up. It's impossible for him to have a relationship with the Sioux family. Lee Dongmai didn't believe it. David was just an ordinary person who couldn't be in the ordinary. He just got out of prison. How could he be involved with the Sioux family? 
Seeing that Lee Dong Mai was still shouting, the bank manager's face turned cold. Security guard, blast them out for me. Soon, two security guards came over and chased Lee Dong Mai out, and Lee Dong Mai's boyfriend was also chased out. What's going on here? What's your classmate's relationship with the Su family? Lee Dong Mai's boyfriend asked worriedly. I haven't heard that he has something to do with the Su family. If he has something to do with the Su family, he won't go to jail. It's only been a few days since he came out. How could he have something to do with the Su family? I think he must have picked up the bank card. Yes, this bank manager is a jerk. Lee Dong Mai said angrily. Okay, don't care if he picked it up or not, let's go. Lee Dong Mai's boyfriend doesn't want to be entangled. If David is really related to the Su family, then he will be out of luck. Lee Dong Mai and her fat-headed boyfriend had just walked out of the bank. They had been waiting outside for David's guys to see them, and they immediately greeted them. Boss Chu, what a coincidence, I didn't expect to meet here. The guy with the gold chain smiled and said. It turned out to be Gangzi, what are you doing here? Lee Dong Mei's boyfriend asked. There's a guy who owes us money, and we're not waiting for him to withdraw it. Gangzi said lightly. Oh, then wait, I still have something to do, and have time to drink together. After Lee Dong Mei's boyfriend finished speaking, he pulled Lee Dong Mai and wanted to leave. After all, these people are not good people, and he doesn't want to have too many intersections with these people. But who knew that Lee Dong Mai did not move, but asked in surprise, is the person who owes you money called David? David. Gangzi was stunned, but quickly reacted. Yes, it seems that his name is David Chen, and he owes us 1.3 million. When Lee Dong Mai heard this, she was so happy that she almost jumped up. I said, why did David have to withdraw 1.3 million today? It turned out that he owed money to others and was trapped in it. Lee Dong Mai sneered, and then said to the Gangzi, why does he owe you all? Money. Gangzi didn't answer Lee Dong Mai, but looked at Boss Chu on the other side. That Boss Chu smiled. This is my girlfriend. When Gangzi heard it, he immediately smiled. Since it's Boss Cho's girlfriend, I won't hide it from you. It's a woman who borrowed usury from us. It's not that he owes us what this kid owes us. It turned out to be a usury loan, then you can ask for more interest, David has 10 million in his card. Lee Dong Mai whispered to the Gangzi. Chapter 73. 10 million. Gangzi was stunned, and then his face flashed with joy, does he really have 10 million? Look at that kid, he doesn't look like a rich man. Lee Dong Mai hurriedly explained, what are you doing to deceive you? He said it himself in the bank just now. After a while, he can actually withdraw 1.3 million. Doesn't that prove that he really has money in his card? Makes sense. Gangzi nodded. Okay, I still have something to do, let's go quickly. Boss Chu pulled Lee Dong Mai hard. What are you afraid of? Let's watch here for a while, wait for David to come out, and then let's go. I want to see if David really has 10 million. Lee Dong Mai threw it away, she didn't want to leave, she still wanted to see David's embarrassment for a while. Boss Chu had no choice but to stand by and wait. Ten minutes later, David came out with a big bag full of cash. Seeing David come out with a big bag in his hand, Gangzi brought someone to greet him immediately. Seeing this, Li Dong Mai also followed, she wanted to see if David really took out the money. When David saw that Li Dong Mai didn't leave, he was slightly taken aback, but he didn't care. Boy, where's the money? Gangzi asked David. David threw the bag in his hand to the ground, and all the white bills in the bag were exposed. Seeing so much money, Gangzi's little brother's eyes are red. Then Li Dong Mai was also a little surprised. 1.3 million, a lot of money, it's all here. David said lightly. Gangzi's younger brother hurriedly wanted to collect the money, but was stopped by that Gangzi. Boy, 1.3 million is probably not enough. Although Gangzi also wanted to take the money, but after knowing that David had 10 million, he wanted to extort more. What do you mean? David frowned. It doesn't make any sense. I just miscalculated the interest, and now it costs 2 million with the principal and interest. The corner of Gangzi's mouth raised slightly. David's face turned gloomy, and there was a bit of killing intent in his eyes. David, don't you have 10 million? 2 million is nothing, just go in and get some. Li Dong Mai looked at David gloatingly and said. David ignored that Li Dong Mai, but said to Gangzi, 1 million and 300,000, if you don't want it, then I will save it again. David bent down to pick up the money and save it again. 
Boy, this money is no longer yours, you can't move it. Gangzi lifted his foot and stepped on the purse. The two men on the side immediately reached out and grabbed David's shoulder, trying to control David. But the two of them were surprised to find that no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't shake David one bit. David's eyes flashed coldly. He stretched out his hand to grab the wrists of the two men, and squeezed gently. There was a sound of bones shattering, and the two men screamed in pain in an instant. People who dare to touch me, court death. When the Gangzi saw this, his face sank, and he kicked David. Kill him, kill him. Seeing this, Li Dongmai was extremely happy and shouted desperately. Bang. But who knows, just as the Gangzi lifted his foot, David also kicked it out, and the latter came first and kicked the Gangzi out. Immediately after David twisted his hands, the arms of the two men were suddenly twisted like a twist, and the painful wailing sound came directly from the mouths of the two. At this time, there was only one younger brother left, who was so frightened that he turned his head and ran away. These thugs have no loyalty at all. David slowly walked towards the Gangzi. At this time, Gangzi's face was pale, and his internal organs were like a knife twisted. Chapter 74 Seeing David walking towards him, Gangzi desperately wanted to get up, but the severe pain made him unable to stand up at all. David's kick was too heavy. You, what are you going to do? Behind me is the Chalong gang, and our gang leader is Feng Sihai. When Gangzi saw David's gloomy face, he was so frightened that he hurriedly moved out of the Chalong gang. Feng Sihai. David sneered. If you don't say that you belong to the Chalong gang, I can spare you, but now you have no chance. After David finished speaking, he stepped on it with one foot and directly crushed Gangzi's legs. Even the best medical skills could not be connected. What? The severe pain made Gangzi scream desperately, rolling on the ground constantly. Seeing David's ruthless action with a cold face, Li Dongmai was frightened, her body was trembling desperately, and her eyes were full of horror. As for Boss Chu, he was sweating profusely and his legs trembled slightly. David picked up the money on the ground, but just gave Li Dongmai a cold look, and with that one glance, Li Dongmai slumped on the ground in fright. Seeing Li Dongmai like that, David sneered, walked directly into the bank, and deposited the money again. When David returned home, he found that Wang Hanhan was still there with Wang Changfeng. Wang Hanhan saw David back, and hurriedly greeted him excitedly. Wang Hanhan just wanted to ask David concerned, but remembered that her mother was still there, so she didn't speak. David, where did you kid go? Hanhan Han has been waiting for you for a long time. You two go out for a walk and have a good chat. Barbara heard that David was back, so she reprimanded with some dissatisfaction. Mom, I've dealt with something. David explained. Aunt Chen, I followed brother David out for a walk. Wang Hanhan Han took David and walked out. She now wants to know how David handled the matter. Okay, let's go, I'm chatting with you, and then we'll have dinner at my house at noon. Barbara nodded happily. David left with Wang Hanhan, Han, and Barbara said with a look of relief, He is Aunt Wang, I think these two children are a good match. I think the two of them are not bad either, ha ha ha. Wang Changfeng also laughed. Brother David, did those people embarrass you? Did they beat you? Walking out the door, Wang Hanhan Han asked eagerly. No, you don't have to worry about usury. It's all right. I will work hard in the future. I will go to the interview tomorrow. If I can, I will take you there. I will find a boyfriend in the future, and I will also keep my eyes open. David smiled slightly. Wang Han Han nodded, looking at David with a bit of love, but David didn't look at her. David just regarded Wang Han Han as his sister and had no other ideas, so he didn't want Wang Han Han to misunderstand. Just when David followed Wang Han Han downstairs in the community, suddenly the phone rang, it was Sonia. David, where have you been? Why are you not at the Pinerest Villa? I asked the security guard and said that you are all gone. Sonia went to Pine Bay to find David and found that David was not there. My parents are not used to living there, so I came back to live here. Although it is a bit shabby, there are many neighbors in the neighborhood, and they are all acquaintances. David lied because he didn't know why his parents left Pinerest Villa. Oh. Sonia snorted, obviously a little disappointed. After a few more chats, David hung up the phone. Brother David, is that your girlfriend? Wang Han Han asked in a low voice after David hung up the phone. David was stunned, not knowing how to answer Wang Han Han, whether Sonia is his girlfriend now, David himself doesn't know, after all, the two have not officially established a relationship. Chapter 75 Seeing David stunned, Wang Han Han smiled, 
If you don't want to say it, don't say it, it doesn't matter. David just smiled and didn't speak. After walking around with Wang Han Han for a while, the two went back for lunch. At the same time, in Horendal People's Hospital, Jordan was lying on the hospital bed with some boredom. He didn't want to live in the hospital, he wanted to go home, but his father Xiaoyan didn't agree and insisted on letting him recover in the hospital and go back. After all, with the financial resources of the Xiao family, even if Jordan stayed in the hospital for a year, it would not be a problem. Just when Jordan was bored, the door of the ward was pushed open, and Delia walked in with a lunch box. Brother Lei, I have good news for you. As soon as she entered the door, Delia said excitedly. What good news? Jordan asked. Then David was kicked out of the Pinerest Villa, and he might fall out with Sonia. Delia said excitedly. Why? Jordan was also overjoyed. If David is not protected by the Sioux family, then David will be nothing. He wants to kill David, just a matter of minutes. Why else, I guess that Sonia doesn't look down on David anymore, presumably she is just teasing David, after all, the two are not in the same family, so how could Sonia like him, this morning, the security guard in Pinerest Villa said, David's parents left with their belongings and returned to the original community. Delia said. Ha ha ha, that's great. Jordan laughed loudly. When I feel better, let's see how I clean up that David, I want to make his life worse than death. The next morning. Sun Few I called. He had asked Sun Xiaoming to pick up David and go to Sun Xiaoming's company together. When Chen Baoguo heard this, he hurriedly urged David to get up. David, you have to perform well today. This is a big company. If you really want to be able to work in it, and become a department manager in the future, you will be able to settle down in the future. Chen Baoguo exhorted David. Got it, Dad. David nodded, took a piece of clothing and put it on his body. You're an interview, how can you wear these clothes? Chen Baoguo frowned slightly. Wear a suit, be quick. Dad, I don't have a suit. David has no habit of wearing a suit at all, so he has never bought a suit. This is Barbara walking over and said to David. Nonsense, why not, you forgot to buy a suit for you three years ago, it was for your wedding, and the result. When Barbara said this, she hurriedly closed her mouth. Today, David's interview, she didn't want to talk about the past. Soon, David put on the suit he bought three years ago. Although it was quite old, it was still very new. After all, David had never worn it once. My son is handsome in a suit, come on. Chen Baoguo patted David on the shoulder. David, come over and let mom touch. Barbara couldn't see it, so she could only touch it with both hands, feeling the way David was wearing a suit. At this time, downstairs in their house, a red BMW 3 Series parked at the gate of the community. In front of the car, Sun Xiaoming looked at the relatively dilapidated community with some disgust. What kind of crappy place is this, it stinks to death, and it still lives in it. Sun Xiaoming frowned and pinched her nose. I really don't know what dad thinks, but he even asked me to pick him up. Sun Xiaoming muttered, and looked at her watch from time to time. At this time, Sun Xiaoming was wearing a professional attire and her bare legs were exposed, which attracted many people's attention, while Sun Xiaoming was full of contempt. I simply despise the people who come out of this community. After waiting for a while, seeing David still not coming down, Sun Xiaoming called Chen Baoguo. Chapter 76 This is the call that Sun Xiaoming asked for from Sun Fuai. After Chen Baoguo answered the phone, Sun Xiaoming said rudely, What time is it, how long do you want me to wait? I have no concept of time, don't. You forgot that it was your family who begged me, and you asked me to wait. After Sun Xiaoming finished speaking, she hung up the phone without waiting for Chen Baoguo to speak. On the other side, after Chen Baoguo answered the phone, he was stunned for a moment, and his face was a little embarrassed. After all, at his age, he was beaten by a little girl from Sun Xiaoming, and he felt very uncomfortable, but he thought that David had to rely on others Chen Baoguo endured the job introduction. Dad, who's calling? David asked. It's Xiaoming, they're waiting downstairs, you go downstairs quickly, remember to say something nice to them. Chen Baoguo urged David to go downstairs. David went downstairs and saw that Sun Xiaoming was waiting at the door, so he walked over and said apologetically, I'm sorry, I kept you waiting. Seeing David, Sun Xiaoming immediately said with a livid face, If it wasn't for my dad's words, I wouldn't be too lazy to pick you up. Look at what you're wearing. Which dynasty's suit is too old-fashioned? 
David frowned slightly, but still suppressed his anger and said, I bought this three years ago, but I haven't worn it, it's still new. The new one has AF. Art, who still wears such an old-fashioned suit nowadays? Sun Xiaoming pouted. Then, then why don't I go and change? David said. Forget it, what time is it, where's the time? Get in the car. Sun Xiaoming opened the car door with a cold face and sat up directly. David wanted to sit in the co-pilot, but just opened the door, but was stopped by Sun Xiaoming. Sit in the back, can you also sit in the co-pilot? David frowned, and then sat in the back, while that Sun Xiaoming didn't wait for David to sit still, and rushed out with a kick of the accelerator. Fortunately, David has the time to recover, otherwise he will fall down. Remember, you can't say you know me when you arrive at the company, and I don't care whether you can interview or not. It all depends on your own ability. Don't expect me to help you. I'm enough to introduce you to the company for an interview. On the way, Sun Xiaoming followed David to talk a lot, the most important thing was to keep David from saying she knew her, because she was afraid that David would embarrass herself. Okay. David just replied with a good word. Soon, the car arrived at Sun Xiaoming's company, which is a collective company with a dozen floors in the entire office. Xin Yu Daily Chemical Company. Limited. David raised his head, looked at the huge company name, and frowned slightly. This is the Su family's company. If David remembers correctly, this Xin Yu Daily Chemical Company is also the Su family's business. He remembers that Sonia seems to have mentioned that this is Sonia's birthday, and the company established by Ruben for Sonia is regarded as birthday present. Sonia is the chairman and legal person of this company, but she does not participate in management and rarely comes to this company. Yes, this is the company of the Su family, the richest man in Horendal. It is a great honor to be able to work here. The various benefits are much better than other companies. Sun Xiaoming said very proudly. David smiled and didn't say anything, but followed Sun Xiaoming towards the company. As soon as I walked to the door, I saw a handsome, tall and handsome young man in a suit standing at the door. This person was Sun Xiaoming's boyfriend Kui Ziyuan. Xiaoming, why did you come today? After Kui Ziyuan saw Sun Xiaoming, he immediately greeted him with a smile. Don't mention it, my dad asked me to pick up that comrade in arms son, so later. Sun Xiaoming pouted, a little not very happy. Chapter 77 Kui Ziyuan looked at David behind Sun Xiaoming, a trace of contempt flashed in his eyes, and then he took Sun Xiaoming's hand and walked forward. David could only follow behind, while Kui Ziyuan and Sun Xiaoming whispered. If you don't want him to work here, I'll just swipe him down during the interview later. Anyway, today is my interview. Kui Ziyuan said in a low voice. Don't be too obvious, or he will tell my dad, and my dad will kill me again. This guy has just come out of prison, so just reject him with this matter. Sun Xiaoming also whispered in Kui Ziyuan's ear. They were afraid that David would hear it, but what they didn't know was that David had listened to every word of the conversation between the two. David's listening ability is not comparable to ordinary people. David in the back laughed coldly. David didn't care about whether he could be interviewed or not. He was just going through the motions. After following Sun Xiaoming and the others to the sales list floor, Sun Xiaoming pointed to Kui Ziyuan, and then said to David, You go with him, remember what I told you, don't tell anyone you know each other here. I. David nodded, then followed Kui Ziyuan to the interview office. At this time, there were already many people waiting outside. These people were all here for the interview. After all, it was a group company with good benefits, so I wanted to come. There are many people, including some students from famous universities. Wait outside, someone will call you later. After Kui Ziyuan said a word, he walked directly into the office, while David found a chair and sat down to rest. Dude, are you also here for the interview? Sitting next to David, a young man with glasses asked David. Yeah. David nodded. What school did you graduate from? I know that many of the interviewees this time are graduates from famous universities. Look at the girl in the skirt. I heard that she is from Qingbei University, and the man with the backpack is from Haida University. Graduated. With an envious expression, the young man followed David. I'm from Beijing Business School. David smiled slightly. Student from Beijing. The young man was stunned for a moment, then said in surprise, You dare to come to this company for an interview with your diploma. You are really courageous. Your university is not as good as my Lanxiang Technical School. The young man looked at David with a bit of pride. He finally found someone with a degree not as good as his own. David smiled and did not speak. 
At this time, a girl in work clothes came over and said to everyone in the interview, Everyone hand over your resume to me, and I will call everyone in for the interview in order. When everyone heard it, they hurriedly handed in their carefully prepared resumes, only David sat motionless. Sir, where's your resume? Seeing that David didn't move, the girl asked. I didn't prepare a resume. David said lightly. Seeing that David did not prepare a resume for the interview, the girl's eyes flashed with surprise, but she still asked aloud, Sir, what is your name, I will call you later. My name is David Chen. David said. The girl nodded, turned and walked into the office. Everyone looked at David like an idiot. On this occasion, wearing an outdated suit and not preparing a resume, how could he possibly be interviewed? Only the young man who was talking to David just now looked at David a little strangely, and then suddenly whispered, Dude, are you related and went through the back door. David was stunned for a moment, wondering why the young man asked such a question. You must have gone through the back door, otherwise why didn't you prepare your resume, and the person who brought you here just now, I see it as an executive in this company, no wonder you are so calm. The young man's face was a little flattering. With a smile, he took out a box of chewing gum from his pocket and handed it to David. David was not polite either, he took it directly and threw it into his mouth. Chapter 78 Dude, if you're really related, can you say something nice to me for a while? If I can be admitted, I'll invite you to a big hotel for a meal. The young man looked at David expectantly. David smiled slightly. Okay, if I succeed, I will give you two good words. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The young man looked happy and kept following David to thank him. Soon, the interviews began. One by one, the interviewers walked in nervously and walked out in frustration. Even those interviewers from the famous universities were unsuccessful. Seeing that the interviewees from the famous universities all failed, the young man beside David became even more nervous, his hands were slightly clenched into fists, and his palms were full of sweat. Next, David. Soon, it was David's turn. When David got up, the young man beside him grabbed him. Dude, you must say something nice for me, I'm counting on you. The boy said nervously. David nodded, and then walked into the office. As soon as he entered, he saw three people sitting behind a desk, with the girl who had just collected her resume standing beside her. That Kui Ziyuan was sitting in the middle, obviously he was the main interviewer for today's interview, and the two left and right were just foils. Whether or not he could pass the interview only needed a word from Kui Ziyuan. Kui Ziyuan looked at David and said calmly, introduce yourself. Just as David was about to speak, he saw an interviewer beside Kui Ziyuan saying, because you don't have a resume, you need to tell me all about your experience in the past few years after graduating from university. David nodded, and briefly explained his experience after graduation. Of course, he also said about his imprisonment. He didn't hide it, and there was nothing to hide. It's just that David said that he was in prison, but no one showed surprise to several people. Obviously, Kui Ziyuan has just told a few people, so these people will not be surprised. After hearing this, Kui Ziyuan closed his eyes slightly, clasped his hands on his chest, leaned on the seat without saying a word, and the girl on the side hurried forward to give Kui Ziyuan a gentle massage. Do you know what kind of company we are? Do you know who the boss of our company is? You, a prisoner who just got out of prison, dare to come for an interview. An interviewer smiled contemptuously. Why don't you dare? Does your company clearly stipulate that people who have been in prison are not allowed to interview? Besides, what's wrong with being in prison? Is it a bad person who has been in prison? David smiled lightly. Although our company has no express regulations, but you are a reformed through labor worker. If you enter the company, it will affect our company's image. I believe that other companies will not want you to be released after serving your sentence. You'd better be self-aware. I if it were you, I wouldn't even show up. The interviewer looked at David playfully, it seemed that he was deliberately humiliating David, and his voice was very loud. This time, the interviewers outside also heard it, and all of them were surprised, and the young man who just followed David was even more shocked. Damn, it turned out to be a prisoner of labor reform. I wasted a piece of chewing gum in vain. It's really bad. The boy hurried to the bathroom to wash his hands. David in the office was not angry, and smiled lightly, if I were you, I wouldn't have the ability to be a man at all, I would have no face to sit here, you have dark circles all over your eyes, are you looking at your wife at night, but you are not at all it's useless, can't sleep all night. David's words made the interviewer stunned and looked at David with a bit of horror in his eyes. 
he didn't understand, how did David know that he was not capable of a man? Chapter 79 This is his secret, and he has never told anyone. In the eyes of outsiders, he has a happy family and a harmonious husband and wife. Only he knows that at night, he will fall into deep pain. Now David's words hit the sore spot, which made the interviewer suddenly furious, and the blue veins on his forehead bulged. You are talking nonsense, you don't have the ability of a man. I have a wife and children, and my family is very happy. The interviewer roared loudly and deliberately took the child seriously, in order to refute David and prove that David is nonsense. David smiled. Even if you have a child, it is not your own, it is not picked up, or your daughter-in-law gave birth to someone else, because your faults have fallen from childhood, and it was caused by an accident and an external force. Make you lose the ability of a man. Bang. Just after David finished speaking, the interviewer slapped the table and stood up, glaring at David and said, you kid investigate me. This interviewer was indeed kicked in the crotch by a donkey when he was a child, so he lost his ability to be a man, and only picked up a child after marriage. Except for those people in his hometown who knew about these things, no one in Horendel would know about it. He deliberately stayed away from his hometown for this reason, but he didn't expect to be directly told by David. You're not worthy of my investigation. David smiled coldly. However, the interviewer's words also proved that what David said was the truth. This time, several colleagues on the scene looked at the interviewer with strange eyes. The interviewer also seemed to feel that he had said the wrong thing, and immediately became angry and rushed towards David. Seeing that an interview was about to turn into a fight scene, Kui Ziyuan could only shout angrily, Enough is enough, sit back for me. The interviewer could only give David a stern look, and then sat back. Kui Ziyuan just wanted to let his subordinates humiliate David and then tell him that it was inappropriate. He didn't expect things to turn out like this, which made Kui Ziyuan a little angry. Boy, you are not suitable to work in our company. You don't want to show us the door as you are. You better get out. Don't come again in the future. Another interviewer saw that Kui Ziyuan was a little angry, and immediately reprimanded David. There are employees like you in such a large-scale company, it's really time to rectify it. David sneered, got up and walked out, he didn't really want to work here. But just when David got up and was about to walk out, suddenly a tall, stern young man in a suit walked in. The youth carried a bit of majesty on his body, and as soon as he entered the door, he glanced at David. David also looked at the young man, and then prepared to leave. But who knew that he was directly stopped by the young man, you are David. David looked at the young man suspiciously and nodded slightly, he didn't know the person in front of him. But if David's parents were there, they would definitely know each other. It was this person who drove David's parents away when they went to the Pine Rest Villa. Mr. Shing. After Kui Ziyuan saw the young man, he ran over flatteringly, and then explained, this person is called David, and he came to apply for the job. Because he didn't meet the requirements of our company, we refused. Leave him. After the young man said a word, he looked at David again, then turned around and was about to leave. Mr. Shing, he, he's a reform through labor inmate who just got out of jail. Kui Ziyuan stopped the young man and said, the young man turned around slowly and looked at Kui Ziyuan with chills in his eyes, are you teaching me to do things? This shocked Kui Ziyuan, shaking his head again and again, don't dare, don't dare. Chapter 80 The youth turned and left, Kui Ziyuan and the two interviewers were all stunned, looking at David in disbelief, wondering how David and the general manager of the company knew each other. David, how did you know me, President Shing? Kui Ziyuan asked with a puzzled face. Is he the general manager of this company? I don't know him. David shook his head. David didn't know this young man, and he had never met him, but this young man had met David, and he even saw David following Sonia Qingqing me and me. The young man's name is Xing Jun. He is an international student who graduated from Stanford University abroad. After working in the Sioux group, he has been reused, and this Xing Jun has also taken a fancy to Sonia and has been pursuing Sonia, but Sonia did not agree. After Reuben gave it to Sonia Company, because Sonia did not manage it, he transferred Xing Jun to be the general manager of Xinyu Daily Chemical Company. Limited. And was solely responsible for the operation and management of the company. This Xing Jun does have some strength. In a short period of time, the management of the company is well organized, and it has become the most profitable subsidiary of the Su Group. 
The reason why Xing Jun worked so hard was to make Sonia look after him, but when he knew that Sonia was dealing with a kid like David who had been in prison, his heart changed drastically, and he wanted to take Sonia from David. Now that David has come to the company for an interview, of course he has to seize this opportunity. As long as David stays in the company, he can have tens of thousands of ways to make David quit despite difficulties, and he can also provoke the relationship between David and Sonia. It's really weird. Kui Ziyuan frowned, but the general manager had spoken. One of his department managers didn't dare to go against it, so he could only say to David, go through the onboarding procedures, and then I'll send someone to show you about the company. Now Kui Ziyuan doesn't dare to trouble David for the time being. He doesn't know what the relationship between David and Xing Jun is. David is also a little strange. He doesn't understand what this is, Mr. Xing, why he wants to keep himself. It seems that he knows himself. Could it be that Sonia knew that she was coming to her company for an interview and specifically asked the general manager? David frowned slightly and thought, followed the girl in the office, and was taken to go through the entry procedures. Damn, your kid turned out to be a reform through labor prisoner. I'm really unlucky to have talked to you for a long time. It's too bad. Just like you, you'll never want to apply for a job. As soon as David went out, he was scolded by the young man who had just put on glasses. David looked at the young man. Originally, he felt that the young man was good, but he didn't want to be such a low-key guy. Mr. Chen, please follow me here. I need an ID card for the entry procedure. Have you brought it? The girl who came out with David asked David. Oh, I brought it. David handed the ID card to the girl, and then smiled gratefully. He knew that the girl asked this on purpose, just to tell the boy. Sure enough, when the young man saw that David had succeeded in the interview, his eyes suddenly widened, his face full of incredulity. However, David ignored him, but after sneering, he followed the girl and left. While David was applying for the job, in the sales manager's office, Sun Xiaoming said angrily to Kui Ziyuan, What's the matter with you? Didn't you say you shouldn't admit him? Now he's been admitted. If you don't bore me to death in the future, my dad will definitely let me take him to work every day. Can you blame me? Who knows what that kid has to do with Boss Xing, he was directly admitted by Boss Xing, what can I do? Kui Ziyuan was also displeased. 